Hi there, how you doing today? My name is Robert. I'm starting a new feature on YouTube today and uh, this is one where you can ask me a question and I'll do the best I can to answer it. So send me a question, use email, uh, my Facebook page, my website masterguitaracademy.com however you like, uh, send me a question and I'll try to answer one question per week. So the first question I've gotten is about my hybrid scale that I've been talking about. I have a, a course on that. And the question was, how can you use it to create a, a call and response type of lick situation and, and make use of call and response playing in blues using that hybrid scale? Well, this is what I'm going to show you today. And so on. You get the idea. I'm playing one lick, playing a bit of rhythm, and I play a second lick and play a little bit of rhythm. And the key thing here is, of course, being able to know where you are in the progression at all times and being able to sort of uh, relax. You know, you play a lick and okay, play a bit of chord, get a bit of breathing space, come back in with a second lick that uh, answers the first one, if you will want to call it that it's 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 uh, to me an approach where you play a lick and it's a response to the first one and it can be almost anything but it has to feel like it's like a resolved idea the first the first lick is is just great by itself But the second one sort of completes the whole idea. And then you play it a second time. Something similar. And the second time, uh, the second lick there, I slightly altered it again. But you can hear it's in the same family of, of the lick, right? It's the same type of sound. So that's a very very useful approach to playing lead guitar and that's one i use a lot maybe all the time when i play focusing on some good notes but honestly the notes are really secondary it's the rhythm it's the execution of the notes in time that it feels like well that's a good uh way to end the lick especially and uh and when i come in on the next lick I can come in almost any time, but I need to come back in a way that I can play some chords too, because that's what this thing is all about. Playing some licks, throwing in a chord, and when I throw in the chords, that's where you get the breather. You sort of hear how, yeah, it's kind of grooving. I have a lick and a bit of a space, meaning chording. Play a second lick and play chording, which is another space. And then, you know, you just build on that go somewhere else on the neck and take it out and, and extend it. You don't have to stick to a, a lick that's that length all the time. You can play later on, you can play a lick that uh, covers both of these chords. That long, which is fine. You just have to know what the backing track, the band is doing while you are busy playing hip notes. So that's the lesson for today and that's my answer to this question and the the hybrid scale this is really doesn't only apply to this hybrid scale of course this applies to anything playing blues guitar but in this case I'm using some of the notes from this hybrid scale that I've been teaching which is consisting of these notes for in the key of A <laughs> are all very useful when you're playing blues in the key of A. And you can learn more about that in, in my course. But let's get the camera up close on the neck and I'll show you and 
talk a little bit more about this approach to playing a call and answer type of lick in a groovy shuffle thing over an A7 and a D7. So first of all, the progression is just simply going from the one chord to the four chord. And this is in the key of A. So the one chord will be A7. And you can play whichever A7 you like. It doesn't really matter. But you need to be able to grab it really quickly. And uh, you need to be relaxed with it. So this is one I often use some form of it and then four chord I play D7 or D9 you can play it with just three strings in that case you can do the same grip for the one chord to get an A7 But we need to be able to switch between those uh, easily and you need to keep the time going because that's a crucial thing. When we have that type of groove going and we always know and feel where we are in the progression, we can throw in these licks. Each time I play the lick, I played it slightly differently. But it doesn't matter because it's the same type of idea and I come back into this 1-4-1-4 one, four, one, four groove all the time. And, and that's the key right there. You have the rhythm to back you up. You play a lick, back into the rhythm, play a lick, and it doesn't really matter if it's shorter than before just have to play more rhythm if that's the case. See? Whatever I do there, I keep backing it up with the rhythm. So uh, that's a great way to get better at well, anything pretty much playing guitar because timing is everything and rhythm is everything. A lick is useless unless you can fit it in to the groove and fit it into the song. So the lick I'm playing, the first one, which is the sort of call lick, is around this idea. I can play it in different ways. See, I can kind of just alter it each time. But it's based around this uh, box one, the one that we all know. What I'm doing is I'm adding in the major sixth in the whole equation. And then I'm going up to the minor third. I can do that if I want. is a cool thing it's just that tritone interval the six and the minor third but other than that it's it's just the pentatonic and I'm landing on the root note sometimes they do a hammer on or I could do I add in the second once in a while of a jazzy thing the six is in here and here's the the second quickly down to the six and back up to the one but most of the time I'm ending the lick on the one of the beat
See, there I went up a little further, up to the fourth, and then three and one back. But that me meant my hand had to move up here. But this all the same idea, right? You can hear the, the ideas in there. I'm just slightly altering it as I'm playing longer and longer over this thing. Of course, after a while, you get tired of that same sound, so you want to go and do something else. But it's a good example of a, a call and response type of lick where you just you go with it. All right, that was the first lick I'm showing you so far. I need to show you the second lick, which is this one. And at that point, you have a choice of starting the rhythm on the one. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Or you can you can end it on the root note. One, two, three, four, and one, two, right? You just have to think about, of course, where you switch the chord next time. So you need to always know, as I said, always know where you are in the progression so you can just relax and start playing lines. And when you're aware of what's happening, with the band or the back and track you can relax and just let your lines flow into the next chord that's really the the key here to be able to do that so this type of ex exercise will will help you with that use a metronome of course when you play this or a drum track or a back and track so again the second lick i'm starting on the sixth of a here and i'm bending it up to the minor seventh and then the five up to this major sixth again and down to the minor third and next would be the one one two three and one. that another slight alteration I'm playing uh, on the one chord or starting on the one which means I have less time to spend on the chord because the D chord is going to sort of come not quicker but sooner because I'm staying longer on on the lick There I made it even longer, which means I have to just come in really quickly on the four chord. So knowing where you are at all times will really let you, you know, stretch out and not have to worry about where you play the lick. Because if you start the lick sooner or earlier than you had planned on, it's fine because you just extend it to fit into the next chord. Or if you start it later than you had planned on and you think you can't fit in the notes you want, well, then you... You can, sh of course, sh play the lick shorter, like remove a few notes or just change the notes so they fit into the next chord. So if I'm playing... You know, things that use the major third. But I know that oh, at some point, uh, right, of course, would be when the in the second bar one two three four here in the second bar you know the the chord switches to the fourth chord d7 which has that note i cannot stay on this one to end my legs then that would be a terrible thing to do because right there is where the chord comes and then you get that sound, which isn't too pretty, I think. <laughs> right? So, always know where you are in the progression. Take a simple lick. And follow up with a, a lick that sort of re responds to it. Now, I don't know if this is a perfect call and response type of lick, but you can hear how I'm starting sort of at lower, meaning here on the five, going up to the minor third up here, 
an ending on the root note. Whatever alternatives I use for embellishments and so on. But it's sort of do do da 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 You know, little embellishments I added in the, the flat five sometimes. This one. Or here. Which is cool. But it starts at a point where it's low, it's around the same place as the first lick. If I'm starting here, it's just one whole step above what I'm starting. But it goes the other way. It's not going up to the root note. It's going down to the root note an octave lower. Here. So, which is an octave lower than here. Right? So, there you have it. The simple approach. So, take this idea. Go with it. Record something similar. Whatever tempo, whatever chord progression you like. And record... Uh, this type of idea where you play a lick that sort of stands out by itself and then you play a second lick that responds to it is an answer to the first one and then you can take that and just go with it and then you know you have a you repeat that thing for a while one more time But here, I'm starting to just try and come up with a different idea. It's similar in a way, but I'm up here now, and I'm trying to find something lower that responds or matches up with it somehow. In, in, in a way that will make hopefully musical sense. So that's how I think when I'm improvising, coming up with the lines, see where I can go with it, and always incorporating some sort of cool rhythm. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Please record something similar on your own and and let me know when you have something ready. I can check it out. Make a YouTube video or even just a recording and, and uh, send that to me and I'll respond and give you some feedback. I would love to see more of you guys do this type of thing and, and share with me and I'll share with all the people that follow me. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. And if you're interested in more in-depth lessons from me, check out my website, masterguitaracademy.com, where I have tons of material like this and beyond. Thanks. I'll see you soon.